Good afternoon and welcome to ENG3E Term 2A, brought to you by Wassa Distance Education Center. I am your instructor for this class, Mike Laverty, and today is Monday, March 6, 2023. So yeah, last week I updated the uh, my background image for this chorus to celebrate the uh, coming of spring, so it's certainly uh, feeling pretty nice out there in uh, Sulacote. Hopefully you're getting some warm weather wherever you happen to be listening from. So we are still working th uh, through Unit 3 of this course. Today we'll cover assignments 8 through 11 in Unit 3. So as I mentioned at the start of last week's classes that uh, Units 1 and 2 had the unit assignments. They had the textbook assignments where you had to look up different assignments in the textbook. So that's not the case with unit three. So you just have the unit assignments, but that of course also includes the culminating assignment. So once we've got the assignments wrapped up, so next week, or sorry, tomorrow's class, we'll cover questions 12, 13, and 14. And then we'll probably spend a couple of days going over the culminating assignment, and then more than likely to start unit four when we're back from the March break. So this is week number five, week five uh, of term 2A. So it's always good to, to remind everybody there's nine weeks of classes in total. So we're together for nine weeks. So we're about, you know, getting to about halfway halfway done the course at this point so so working towards you know finishing off the units getting everybody ready for the for the final exam the last day of term 2a is april 14th 2023 so that's uh, a good thing to keep in mind so we have term 1a 1b and term 2a and two and term 2b so this course sorry this this term is going to be wrapping up um you know in about four weeks from now and we have a big day coming up graduation day that's june 15th 2023 so about 15 weeks from now so that's just wanted to take a, a moment to talk about that deadline so that's a really important date so, you know, 15 weeks is, is enough time to get a chorus, maybe two choruses out of the way it might be a little bit too ambitious to expect to, you know, to complete three or four in that time. But it sort of gives you an indication of how much time you have left. So if you're an independent learner and you haven't started um, anything in the chorus, then, you know, 15 weeks is certainly enough time to, to get things done. But I think you need about nine, ten weeks to 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 do the chorus justice, and you don't want to cram an entire chorus into a, into a couple of weeks. So just be mindful of those updates. Be realistic with yourself um, with, with how much time you can commit to to these choruses before you sign up for a new one. You know, you know, I I would strongly advise that you finish off the ones that you're currently registered in and seek out and you know get as much help as you can from your instructor from your uh your DEC at your local learning center or by phoning the WASA office and you know my my field of, ex of, of expertise is English and the, the three courses that I'm responsible for teaching that's ENG 3E and 4E so that's grade 11 and grade 12 workplace level English and the literacy course, OLC 4.0. So if you've got questions about those in specifically that I'm here to help you, but if you've got questions about your, your entire high school education and charting your path towards graduating, then you wanna you know, reach out to your learning center or phone, email or message the WASA office directly. And someone here will give you, give you all the help you need. So we wrapped up units one and two we are now working on unit three we started last week but we'll need the rest of this week to finish 
So that'll be our first half over here. And then we'll have units four and five and at least, you know, a solid week to go over the final exam. If you're registered in term 2A, so if you're registered to this term, then you would write your final exam during the following week. So after, so where, where it says final exam week nine, that's, you know, these, these are be, these will be classes. Classes to review, you know, and prepare. And then the following week is where you, we would schedule a, a time for you to write your final exam. So everyone who completes this course must pass the final exam. And if we can't, if we can't arrange a final exam for you in your home community or whatever the situation may be, then you'll be assigned a course culminating activity. So thank you for tuning in. If you're listening to us live on the air at 91.9 FM, thanks for joining us. Please note that you can phone the studio at 1-807-737-4017 or the toll-free long distance, 1-800-465-7144. You can also listen if you have Bell Express View, channel 972. And please note that you can always participate in the Zoom classes by going to zoom.us, you'll see a button that says join. And when you click on that button, it'll ask for a meeting ID. And that is 417-6699-799. So once you have gone to zoom.us and click join, it'll prompt you and say, please enter your meeting ID. You enter that meeting ID and then you can participate in the classes. So that's of course, going, uh, participating in our lectures, our classes live. If you can't participate live, then you can go to our YouTube channel. And if you search for Laverty Wassa, you will find my YouTube channel and you will find playlist organized for ENG3E. And you'll see units one through three. Each one has its own playlist. And a term 2A playlist, which is everything that we have so far. Please reach out to me at mlaverty at nnecschools.org. Find me on Facebook. Send me a message on Messenger. If you search for Laverty Wassa, you will come across my Facebook profile, my professional Facebook profile. Please phone the WASA office at 1-807-737-1488, extension 2211. Ask for Mike if you get the receptionist or 1-800-667-3703. Please get in touch with the WASA office. Like I mentioned, if you've got any questions about your, your journey to getting your Ontario Secondary School Diploma, and contact me if you've got any questions specifically about this course, about writing, about English. So about four weeks in, this is your suggested progress. So you should have made contact with my with your teacher through email, messenger, or phone. Read the study guide, units one, two, and unit three. So these are the, those are the PDF files or the, uh, the printouts. Should have completed all the assignments in unit one. And you should be about halfway through the assignments in unit two. So here is today's lesson. We'll have a look at some images. So our images of the day, these are, are around famous advertisements. And we'll look at the assignments for unit three, eight through 11. Our assigned reading for today from the road ahead is borderline jeans ad passes scrutiny here. So it's a newspaper article published uh, about 20 years ago. So we'll delve into that. Learning goals are to take notes on unit two assignments, do a close reading of a newspaper article, and to discuss the concept of bias and think about how the media changes us. So, so today we're talking uh, um, a lot about uh, media, different forms of media, how media is used to, you know, change our thoughts and behaviors, you know, how, how it can change us for the good, 
how it can change us for for the bad, you know, positive change, negative change. So so we're thinking about that um, and thinking about bias and how, you know, everybody has bias and it's not always a bad thing, but good to be aware of it. And bias is a critical um, part about, you know, being... Um, you know, being a literate person, right? And ENG3E uh, places a, uh, an emphasis. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of focus on your communication skills. So your ability to read, your ability to write. And, you know, the ability to read, you know, it, it starts off with just learning letters and sounds and learning how to put together words to form a sentence. And that's literacy at its most basic levels. But as you as you progress as a student of English and as you start to improve your literacy skills and improve your reading skills, then you you will become more critical and you will become more discerning and you'll be able to look at a piece of writing and not only know what it's about, but know what form it is what type of writing it is. You'll be able to talk about its purpose. Um, you'll be able to talk about who wrote it, uh, why they wrote it, what their intended purpose was, who their audience was. So, you know, last week we were talking a lot about, you know, usefulness and, you know, what's the, what's the usefulness uh, of this document versus that document, right? What's the usefulness of an email, right? Um, versus, you know, a phone call to solve a problem. So unit 3E, we're looking at various forms of communication. And so we're looking at how they work and what purposes they serve, how they're useful, but also using what we call critical literacy skills, right? So being critical of something, again, it's not always a bad thing, but when you're critical of something, you ask questions about it. You don't just take it at face value. You don't just accept it as truth. You know, you're, you're critical of it. And then that, and that can be good and bad. You can criticize someone and be really negative and hurtful, but you can criticize someone with a really positive intent, uh, positive intent, and that can really help them. So you'll be successful if you can use your understanding of bias, advertising, and newspaper articles to complete unit assignments 8 through 11. So if you're listening on the air, I will, I will do my best to describe these advertisements and let you know why I brought them up. So on, on the screen, I have three uh, famous or infamous advertisements, depending on how you look at it. We've got a Nike ad uh, featuring Colin uh, Kaepernick. So he was um, famous or infamous, depending on how you look at it, for kneeling during an NFL game. Uh, I, I believe he did this for several NFL games. He knelt during the national anthem as a way to, uh, I, I believe in his own words, to, to bring attention to police brutality in America, to talk about um, you know, his view that uh, African-American people were being targeted by the police. And he was trying to do something about it and raise awareness about it. And Nike released an advertisement with his face on it saying believe in something even if it means sacrificing everything and so they got a lot of criticism for this ad they had a lot of pressure to take it down to not have him as a sponsor so you know advertising companies are usually pretty wary um to to take a side politically you know left or right liberal conservative republican democrat you know they're their main focus is, of course, making money, and they don't want to do anything that will put them at risk uh, of making that money. So sometimes they do get a bit bold and put an ad like this out. So, and even the ad itself kind of speaks to the the idea of sacrificing. So, and some people accuse them of just trying to cash in on this on this story. And they don't really care either way. They just want to sell shoes. So um, 
Yeah, it, it's very it's very complicated, right? So um, today we're talking about motivation, you know, uh, messaging, you know, what what message is the advertiser communicating? What's their motivation? Um, you know, do do they, do they care about social change? Do they just care about selling shoes? Right. These are all very important questions to ask. The middle one is a Mr. Clean Mother's Day ad. So this Mother's Day, get back to the job that really matters. So this ad was taken down by the company. It offended a lot of women in particularly. They sort of argued that the job that really matters is like spending time with your kids and, and doing stuff like that. But it, it was perceived by a lot of people saying that, you know, um, a woman's job that really matters is cleaning the house, right? So like really old fashioned kind of dated messaging and advertise advertisements are, are kind of cool because they, they really do say a lot about the society that we live in, right? Um, um, or the society people think that we should live in or, you know, things like that. It's, uh, Advertisers spend millions, if not billions of dollars on their ad campaigns, and they do a lot of research. So they're usually tapping into a lot of research that tells us how people think and behave and the way our societies are or the way we think they are. But sometimes advertise, ad, ad companies put something out there and then the, the feedback they get from people is so wrong or so negative that they, they realize they were off the mark. And just for laughs, I've got uh, Barney Rebel and Fred Flintstone smoking a cigarette um, in bedrock because it was very common to see cartoon characters, even for shows aimed at kids, uh, to see cartoon characters drink and smoke and to promote all kinds of products that you would never see a kid's show promote today, too. So it's advertising changes over the decades. You know, it, it's changed a lot even since I was a kid where most advertisements were on TV or in magazines. Now you've got ads and YouTube channels, social media feeds, you know, they're everywhere. So good questions to ask, right? All right, so now we're on to our unit assignments. So this is unit assignment eight from unit three. So what we'll do, what we'll do is we'll we'll have a close look at this newspaper article titled "Borderline Borderline Jeans Ad Passes Scrutiny Here." Uh, so the question uh, reads: What is the complaint raised by the woman and her daughter? Was the matter resolved to satisfy the mother? At least two sentences, and that's worth three marks. So. I've mentioned this a few times in the in this course before, and it, it's worth mentioning again. So, actually, before I do that, I'll say I'll let you know this is on page. So, on page one twenty of the Road Ahead. So, in our anthology, page twenty of the Road Ahead, you'll find this magazine article. And so I think it's 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 helpful if you read the questions before you read the article. And then you know read the questions have have those questions you know in in the in the back of your mind a, as you read through the article and I'm going to read it out loud to you too so so a, as I read the question out loud you can think about these questions. So the first question is what is the complaint raised by the woman? And it's a two-part question. So what is what is her complaint? Or I guess, what is their complaint? And then follow-up question, was the complaint resolved? So this mother and her six-year-old daughter raise a complaint. And when we read the article, do we find out, you know, like, is is the complaint resolved or is the issue still ongoing? Question nine. Do you believe the woman had a valid complaint? Uh, for example, do you agree with her complaint? Why or why not? At least two sentences, right? So you've got to, 
you know, um, weigh in on the issue? Um, do, do you think that you had a valid complaint? And if not, then you have to explain why. So I will read this article out with the, keep those questions in mind. Borderline genes add passive scrutiny here. This is by the Canadian Press and Record Staff. A Dundas woman and her six-year-old daughter stand alone in their fight to have a blue jean advertisement removed from bus shelters because they say it is sexist. Kitchener Transit officials, for example, have received no complaints about the guest jeans ad, which features actress Drew Barrymore in a bare shoulder provocative pose and shows only a small portion of her jeans. The ad appears in 13 shelters in Kitchener and Waterloo. Linda Cluett lodged a complaint with Hamilton's bus company, saying the advertisement has no relevance to the product and it exploits women. She told the ad, told the ad was for jeans, Cluett's daughter said, it's just big boobs. But the staff at Hamilton's bus company vowed, voted earlier this week to not remove the poster. John Gos Gosnich, supervisor, supervisor of customer services at the Hamilton Street Railway, assembled 12 female members of an advisory committee to judge the ad. Only one of the 12 voted against it, he said. Transportation Commissioner Dale Turvey, who made the final decision, said in a written statement to Cluett that the poster abides by the Canadian Code of Advertising Standards and will not be removed. He said the decision was also based on the fact that the ad is running across Canada without controversy. But Cluett said she won't be deterred by the decision. She has already mailed a complaint to the Canadian Advertising Foundation, which handles complaints about advertising. Yvonne McKinnon, Vice President of Advertising and Promotion for Mediacom in Toronto, which books space for the ads, said the ad was taken to the Canadian Advertising Foundation, which handles complaints about sex role stereotyping and exploitation, because she thought there might be concerns. The foundation first felt the ad contravened its guidelines, McKinnon said, but reconsidered because the guidelines also allow for tasteful, positive, relevant sexuality in advertising. A foundation spokeswoman said the foundation let the ad pass, despite concerns about potential complaints, because it included a celebrity. We were concerned that it could be considered an exploitive or sexist ad, but because it was Drew Barrymore, we thought it was worth taking a chance. But, Cluett said, whether it's a celebrity or an unknown model is irrelevant. She also wrote to Media Watch, a national watchdog group that works to eliminate negative stereotyping to the, to the media. All right, so we've got the story, we've got the complaint that was raised, and we hear about how the complaint was received. Now, I'm not sure if this is the advertise. I do have an image of Drew Barrymore in a, in a, in a jeans advertisement from the 90s. In this one, uh, I, don't, I don't think we can, we can see that she's wearing uh, jeans of any kind at all, right? So that is a... It's often it's often a complaint raised against advertisements. Um, sometimes the, the the thing being advertised is not even in the ad, right? And and they're just using a celebrity to to get attention. And you know, sometimes sometimes they 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 do they do choose ad campaigns that are intended to get a lot of attention from people. They're they're intended to be provocative and. I think that that's, that's sort of what gets them in trouble sometimes, but then sometimes the trouble and sometimes the the attention that they get, um, you know, the, the attention they get by putting out a provocative ad can kind of generate more sales, can kind of get more attention out there. So that's that's what you've got to do here. So... Find the complaint, so identify it, put it in its put it, put that complaint in your own words, and then in your own words, tell us, you know, is the mother satisfied? She raised her complaint, she got a response from a few people. Um, is she happy with the complaint? Is the problem over? And if so, how was it resolved? And if it's not resolved, then tell us, you know, what more has to be done and tell us why she's not happy. And then you have to weigh in with your opinion on, on this article, right? So do you think this woman should have made the complaint? Do you agree with it? Was she right? Was she wrong? So just talk about that uh, in at least two sentences. 
Question 10 is find an example of an article in a newspaper or a magazine that contains some kind of complaint about something. Underline the complaint, submit the actual article or a copy of it. So I'm, I'm going to walk through, um, you know, the, the steps that we would do to, to figure that out. So, so I, I did some thinking about this and then I, I found a few sources where we can look for, for articles of this nature. So if you've got access to an actual newspaper, then by all means, uh, you can do that. And so what, what you're going to find are, you know, there, there's two, two like sources for, for these, for these uh, complaints. There, it's going to be a letter to the editor. So a letter to the editor is, you know, it, it's written by a reader of the magazine or the newspaper, whether it's uh, a print magazine or a physical magazine. And so somebody reads something in in the article that they don't like, and then they write an art. They write a letter in response to it. Or sometimes, if it's in a newspaper, most likely they 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 find something that's happening in their community that they don't like. There's a problem, there's an issue, there's something that's dividing people, there's some controversy. And then people write their letter to the editor uh, that way. So it's so it's it's either they're either raising a new issue that's um, being talked about in the paper, or they're they they're responding to something specifically brought up by that newspaper. So we'll have a look at a couple of these sources and just and just see what's in them. So that first one is uh, baytoday.ca, letters to the editor. Let's okay, see if I can remember that. All right, so we've got bay. This is North Bay, by the way. Baytoday.com slash letters hyphen to hyphen the hyphen editor. Oh, I must have typed that in wrong. Let's just go to baytoday.com. Ah, that's the problem. I need baytoday.ca slash letters hyphen to the editor. All right, so we've got some we've got some letters here. So we've got uh, a better healthcare alternative does exist. School board decision on trans kids was the correct one. Why can't North Bay transition to a hybrid fire department? So let's look at this first one. A better alternative, a better healthcare alternative does exist. Ontario now funds our public hospitals at the lowest rate of any province in Canada, despite the government's claims that it pays more for healthcare than ever before. Right. So Letters to the editor, like by by definition, will include some kind of complaint. Um, not all letters to the editor are are voicing a complaint, but I, I would I would argue that most of them are. Most of them, you know, someone's got an issue with something, and, and they're using the they're using the platform of the newspaper or the magazine to raise attention raise awareness about the issue, get people riled up, you know, whatever the case may be. So if we read this one, to the editor, the decision of the Ford government to privatize some of Ontario's health care services and hand them over to for-profit clinics and hospitals as a political choice, but doing so is not a necessity. During the 2022 spring election campaign, the Ford cons were repeatedly asked if privatization was on their agenda. They categor categorically denied that it was, several times, in fact. The Ford cons lied, and they simply do not have the mandate to do what they are proposing. Ontario now funds our public hospitals at the lowest rate of any province in Canada, despite the government's claims that it pays more for health care than ever before. 
Those claims, however, do not account for the increase in our population, nor for the fact that there are more seniors requiring more care than ever before. So you just got to do the work and you've got to go in there and you've got to find the, the complaint. Um, and, you know, usually it's listed in that first paragraph. So, um, so privatizing some of Ontario's healthcare services and handing them over to for-profit clinics is, it's not a necessity. So there, are, that's the complaint. Um, the complaint is about the Ford government trying to um, privatize some of our healthcare uh, system. So it, it, so whether you believe in this or not is sort of irrelevant for, for this exercise. You're just really identifying the complaint, highlight it, circle it, point it out, and then just send that back to, to myself, right? So if I pick this example, um, anytime you find an online article, you can always right click on it and you can save it as so, um, or sorry, you can go to print and then I would save, I could save that as a PDF to my, to my desktop. And then I would need to do something, um, to highlight this thing, right? Um, another option you might want to do is just to, you can highlight all of the text, copy it, and then put it into a Word document. So you've got a few options, right? So if, if you've got an actual newspaper copy in front of you, you can take a picture of it, you can scan it, you know, you've, you've got, you've got some options, right? So I'm going to copy this and see if it'll let me paste it. Yeah. So I, I've just copy and pasted the article into a word document and I, I could print that off. I don't necessarily need that photograph in there. I can take that off. Oops. Yeah. I'm just going to cut that out. Delete some of this extra stuff. And there we go. And then, you know, uh, I'm going to highlight. Oops. Oh, I didn't realize you could do that. Well, well, there you go. Might work the way I wanted it to. There you go. So I've highlighted what I think is the complaint, and then I will then have to print that off and forward that to to my teacher. Okay, we got the chroniclejournal.com slash opinion. Let's have a quick look at that. So you can go to the Thunder Bay newspaper, so chroniclejournal.com slash opinion. And when you go to the opinion section on the chroniclejournal.com, you will see there is uh, actually at the top here, uh, the top banner, if you click on opinion, there's going to be columns, there's going to be editorials, letters to the editor. So... The editorials are going to be the same way. Um, even though these are like two or th they're about three years old, they still work. So sometimes you see these referred to as op-ed pieces, so opinion editorials or editorial opinions. You know, um, if someone's giving an opinion, then you just need to highlight the the complaint that they're making, right? So you'll find a lot on this. So if you go to chroniclejournal.com slash opinion or click on this opinion here, and you've got some recent letters to the editor too here. So you've got um, bandwagon riders were absent in the fight. So someone writing an article about the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. 
And then our other one was toronto.com slash opinion slash letters. So, you know, uh, Thunder Bay and North Bay are, you know, um, I guess not close to home for North Bay for sure. But um, let's see, we do. Uh, yeah. So if you go, if you go, actually, if you go to toronto.com and click on opinion at the top, then under opinion, we have uh, editorials, we have letters. And again, it's just more people writing letters. Um, and it's going to be very um, Toronto specific because this is about Toronto. But if you're looking for examples, uh, I'm just trying to point you in the in the right direction. So, so I've included those three. You can have a look at. So you've got the Bay Today. That's North Bay. Chronicle Journal. That's Thunder Bay. And you've got Toronto.com. So just some places you can go. And you're just finding an example and then highlighting it or, you know, showing us or underline the complaint. And then we need to see the actual article or a photocopy or a picture of it or whatever the case may be. All right. So question 11 says. This is about the, the main forms of media. And this is this is where you're doing a uh, a bit of writing. So the question reads: the main forms of media, television, newspapers, magazines, uh, social media, so TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, etc., and radio, they all share a variety of messages with the public. These media forms can have both positive and negative influences on us. You are to comment on this statement, right? So that whole statement, right? So, um, so you're doing a half page handwritten response. So that is uh, worth 12 marks. So you're looking at, you know, uh, one to two paragraphs. commenting on that statement um, specifically you know if, if we if we reword that question you know how does consuming or using the media change who you are how does it help you how does it harm you write down a list of positive and negative changes in your life potential or actual that are caused by consuming media Right. So just so just think about that. Right. So what is the. Um, what are the negative effects in your life and what are the positive effects in your life that are caused by consuming media? So you, you often will hear that phrase consuming media and it's almost like. It's it's kind of like consuming food and a diet. Right. And, you know. You know, the, the the kind of foods you eat as a person and the kind of things you put in your body, they, they literally make up who you are, right? Because it's you, that expression, you are what you eat, is very true. And I think that this also applies to our minds, you know, whatever we meditate on, whatever we think about, whatever we focus on, you know, whatever we, whatever we think about, um, quite literally becomes and shapes who we are right so the kinds of media we focus on and you know where where we give our attention to it really does change who we are and it's going to it's going it's inevitably it's going to change us in positive ways and it's going to change us in negative ways so this assignment is all about having a look at that and having an honest look at how media changes who you are uh, for good and bad so just to give you a little bit of context for completing this assignment, I have looked at the um, one of the assigned readings for, for today, and, and this one had to do with types of bias. So these are these are different forms of bias that you often find in the media, in, in written text, in but this is everything from like photographs to social media posts, advertisements. So we have the bias by omission, 
So that's defining a group without including all the information about it. So that's, I, I would say a group or a person, right? So sometimes you can say a lot by not saying something, right? It's sort of uh, counterintuitive, but if you, um, sometimes it's not just what you say about a person, it's it's what you're not saying, right? So sometimes bias can can come in um where someone will pick and choose what they talk about when they when they de they define a group or they define a subject matter right so they 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 choose to omit right so that's why it's a bias of omission uh bias by commission which is kind of like the opposite problem so that's when they're, when they're not they're not not talking about something this time they're focusing on something and giving it um, much more uh, attention than it normally would have. So drawing attention to particular qualities <laughs> to define or separate a group or a person. Implicit and an implicit bias, right? So this is just like, um, you know, implicit meaning in a text. It, it's stuff that is indirectly stated. They're not actually coming out and saying it, but it's, um, and then probably the best example of this is stereotypes. So using stereotypes to talk about a certain group of people or a stereotypical view of something, right? So that's an implicit bias. And then there's, um, so most, you know, mo I, I would say that most bias is, is probably implicit, indirectly stated. It, it can be hard to, to pick it out. And, and that's why it's so dangerous is because you don't really see it. And it's just, it's, it's sort of there or it's under the surface. Explicit bias is directly stated. And that's presenting a prejudiced view of events, individuals, and or groups. So that's just, um, you know, like if an... If an advertisement was deemed to be to, to to be you know to be racist or to be sexist, then the language used in it would be explicitly, you know, saying like this is what we actually believe. There wouldn't be any kind of um, like subtle to subtlety to it or nuance. You wouldn't have to sort of like dig through the different layers of meaning. It would just be really obvious, right? So. Explicit bias is really obvious in your face and implicit bias is it's there, but you have to kind of do a bit of thinking to, to, to make it known or to really understand what you're looking at. And then in this, um, In, in the magazine article, you also get some you also get some information about content. You get information about content, audience, and portrayal of characters or subject matter. So the content is you know um, to identify um, the bias in the content, you have to ask yourself some important questions. So uh, some of these questions include like, what is the form? You know, so just talking about like, is it is it an advertisement? Is it an article? Is it a newspaper article? Is it a news broadcast? Is it a TikTok video? So what's the form of the content? Uh, who wrote it or who made it, right? Would be uh, uh, who wrote it? Who made it? Who's the creator? Uh, who published it? Um, you know, where is it found? We can ask ourselves, who paid for it? That's a very important question, right? Uh, who paid for it to get there? Is it free? Is it, um, do you have to pay for it? There is, you know, there's, like for example, there's 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 edutainment, um, 
there are like where like you're being entertained but you're also being educated at the same time uh, i'm trying to think of the name for it but there's sometimes you, you'll see an article uh it, it's an advertisement but it, it's pretending to be an article right so it looks like it was published by an article and it's about a product or it's about a celebrity but really it's just an advertisement right so sometimes they will hide they will hide advertisements um, and, and try to dress them up as 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 articles. And Facebook and Twitter and other social media platforms in recent years have started to crack down on things like this. So if something is an advertisement, it has to be clearly labeled as an advertisement. It can't uh, pretend to be something else that it's not. If something is satire, if it's if it's not meant to be real news then they have to say that it's it's you know it's pretend it's just for laughs because it's really hard to sift through the good and the bad and to know what's real and what's fake so yeah who paid for it what is it about or what is included and what is not included right so what have they given me what have they not given me what are they hiding what are they what are they putting out front that's you know maybe trying to draw attention away from something else all right the audience uh who is the content made for who is the intended or target demographic what does the creator of the content want the audience to think feel or do right so this is when this is again when we're talking about um you know what's their purpose what's their motivation Do they just want to sell shoes? Do they want to sell ideas? Do they want to get attention? Are they out to change the world? Are they trying to help people, right? Motivation is a really big one. How is the audience intended to consume the content? So are they supposed to see it online? Are they supposed to see it on their walk on a billboard? Are they supposed to hear it on a radio broadcast, find it on their social media feeds, et cetera? and the portrayal of the characters who or what is being portrayed is this about a specific person or a group of people more importantly how are these people portrayed are they shown in a positive or negative light is the content portraying an idea or expressing an opinion is the subject matter being discussed or portrayed objectively or is there a bias right and that and that brings us to the definition right so a bias is an opinion or a preference so on its own, you know, it, it's often sounds negative, but it doesn't have to be negative. Bias can keep us from making objective judgments. So, you know, objectivity is, you know, the way the world is, despite what anybody thinks about it. Um, objective truths are things that we can't argue about. You know, like we live on planet Earth. The sun is shining today. My name is Mike. I work at WASA. That's objective reality. And then subjective is things that are like, you know, from my particular point of view and uh, people's opinions. And right, there's uh, often this, this, this line drawn between facts and opinions, right? So, you know, we can't argue about the facts, but we can argue about our opinion of the fact over the facts, that kind of thing, right? So so that's what a bias does if we have a bias then we're not being objective and it's pretty much impossible to be objective all of the time right so all you can really do is be aware of your biases and be aware of the biases of other people and, and that's what it's about it's not um it's not about never having bias and being perfect and being neutral because that's impossible what this what we're really talking about here is just finding ways that you can um you can be aware of bias and the more you're aware of bias and the more you can point it out in yourself and in others then the more informed you're going to be the better decisions you're going to make that kind of thing right which brings us all the way back to question 11 here so commenting on this statement, the statement that, you know, the media affects us for good. 
and for bad. And again, I, I would I would really focus on, you know, I would I would start with a list, you know, a list uh, of, of the positives and the negatives. So for assignment eleven, you know, I I would actually I would argue, you know, like step one. I would choose, say, um, choose a specific, a specific example, or you know, a type of media you know, you know, with a few uh, specific um yeah so so choose a choose a type of media and so that could be ads or social or articles uh with a let's see with a few specific examples right and then you're going to have and then you're going to get your notebook and you're going to go positive and negative And let's say, for example, let's say we choose um, Facebook. You know, um, and then I can get information about uh, things or people I care about. Uh, and then a negative thing, but it could be, for example, it can be addictive or it can take me away from family. You can kind of get a warped view. Um, you know, I only get. That's that's okay. That's more of a negative, a positive thing. But uh, yeah, so you just got to brain, brainstorm. You know the the positive uh, influences of the of that particular media, and talk about the negative side of things. And if you can if you can get it down to a specific point of view, I, I think that be that would be for the best. You know, media is such a broad term. And really, media—it's—it's—it's it's, it's way too big when you, when you think of advertisements, newspaper articles, social media, you know, uh, you know, radio broadcasts, news broadcasts, uh, photographs, billboards. It's just it's way too big to talk about. So if you can focus your writing on a specific kind of media, and if you can get even more specific from that, and talk about like for Facebook, for example, we could talk about Facebook groups. Uh, getting news from Facebook, community Facebook pages, um, celebrity pages, corporate Facebook pages, right? So, so if we just focus our writing on one specific aspect, and you know, for example, like Facebook, that's a good way to focus your writing, and it'll make for a much more powerful statement. So that's it for today. We will see you tomorrow for class number seventeen.